Hi, I'm Miss Katie with Arizona Farm Bureau Ag in the Classroom. And I'm Miss Alicia with Arizona Farm Bureau Ag in the Classroom. And today we are so excited to be here with you to talk about one of our favorite things. Food! What's your favorite food? What's your favorite food? What's your favorite food? Our favorite food? Hamburgers. hamburgers. Raise your hand if you like hamburgers. Yes. Okay. So tell us where hamburgers come from then. Like Burger King? I'm, I'm hearing <laughs> all. You guys eat out a lot, don't you? We got McDonald's, use a Burger Wendy's. King, Wendy's, Jack in the Box, Culver's, Whataburger, In and Out Burger. Mm. Oh my gosh. But is that where the burgers come from? I mean, that's where we get them from. But where do those restaurants get the burgers from? That's right. They get them from the farmers. And so today we're very excited to talk to you guys about some of Arizona's farmers and ranchers that are producing every single day the products that we need to build our own burger. So to do this activity, we really need your guys' help. By now, your teacher should have supplied you with a blank map of the United States. Because as we build our burger, what are we going to do? We're going to fill in the state which the part of the burger is grown in the most. And when we say the part of the burger, we are talking about a specific commodity. Can you guys say commodity? Commodity. commodity very good so that's how we talk about these things in agriculture so we're going to talk about several different commodities as we map our way through the united states as we build our own, own burgers burger. very excited okay so you should have your blank map by now and you should also have eight different colors crayons colored pencils markers we we really don't yeah. care, right? Yeah, whatever okay. your teacher says you can use. Yep, so go ahead and take just a minute and grab your markers and your crayons. Eight different colors and also have your blank map. Ready, set, go. I'll put a blank spot in here that says, <laughs> get your stuff. <laughs> get more. Yeah. Hey, you put, yeah, put on the screen. Okay, looks like you all have your blank maps and your eight colors, which is super duper important. So let's get down to business. If we want to build the world's best burger, because that's mm -hmm. what we're here to do today, is yep. to build the world's best burger, what is the very first thing that we have to have? These people know their burgers. Yeah. We do. We need to have a bun. bun. Look Do you guys see the size of this bun? Ginormous bun. So this is our bottom bun, of course. Mm -hmm. But we also have to have a top bun. You see our little sesame, oh, little sesame seeds, seeds up there. Okay, this is a very fancy world's best burger. So we have our bun, but what do we have to have to make this bun? Yeah, we have to have flour. Very good. Mm -hmm. And where does flour come from? Where do we get that from? What at the farm provides us with flour? Wheat. wheat. Very good. Okay, everybody say wheat. 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 So do we grow wheat here in Arizona? Raise your hand if you think we grow wheat. We do. Our farmers grow lots and lots of wheat here in Arizona. And our farmers grow a couple of different types of wheat, and that's something important to keep in mind. So the first type of wheat that our farmers grow is called desert durum or durum wheat. And that wheat is used specifically to make pastas. Okay, so that's a little bit different than the wheat that yeah. we use to make our hamburger buns and our different breads from. But our farmers here in Arizona do also grow that wheat. But do we think that Arizona grows more wheat than anybody else? No, mm -hmm. you guys are right, okay? Do we have any guesses as to which state grows the most wheat? Go ahead and just yell them out one at a time, not all together, okay? 
Well, lots of good guesses. I think maybe we should help well, them out. Give, I'm going to give you a hint. So yes. I'm going to show you on the map, so you kind of need to know which state is which. Keep it low, or they'll see the answer. Oh, there we go. Wheat. What state is that? What do you think? Two above Texas. So what's mm. the state right above Texas? We know where Texas is. Right here. Texas, Oklahoma, and Kansas. Kansas. That's the breadbasket of yeah. the United States. And so that makes sense. The breadbasket, that's where the most of our wheat comes from. So what we want you guys to do is we want you to pick one of your colors. It doesn't matter what color, but you're gonna pick the color that you want to represent wheat, and you're gonna color in Kansas. And once you've done that, we want you to write the word wheat somewhere on the bottom of your map. Write it semi-small, knowing that you, you're gonna have eight different things written on this map by the time that you are done, okay? So pick one color, color in Kansas, and also write the word wheat in that same color to create your map's key. Go ahead, do it now. Okay, so we have our bun. Oh yeah, big which bun. Which is, is good, right? Unless you're on a low carb. All right, bun. What's the next thing we need to make the world's best burger? Um, what part? Yeah. The, the hamburger. Burger. The burger. The burger, right? <laughs> Why don't you tell them about the burger? Because I have the best. Okay, so the burger patties. What is this burger patty made out of? What are most of our burger patties? Now there's lots of different types that you can So get this is store. not a turkey burger. Okay. Okay. And it's not a veggie burger. It's not made of anything. What's it's a hamburger? A hamburger made out of. Cattle, beef, right? So beef. So this is made from beef. Okay, do you guys think that we raise the beef cattle in Arizona? Beef cattle? Think of those Arizona oh, five C's, yeah, that, right? Cattle is one of our five C's. That's because it's so important to our state. Okay, so how many beef cattle do you think that we have in Arizona? How so many? is it like a thousand? Is it like a hundred thousand, a million? What do you guys think? You guys, Say it out loud. Ooh, I, have, I heard some close guesses. I heard some close guesses, but nobody got the exact no. answer, which is pretty wild because we have 920,000 beef cattle here in the state of Arizona being raised by our ranchers. That's a lot. Yeah. So ranchers, or cowboys and cowgirls, are the ones that take care of the beef cattle, okay? So those are different than the cows that we see at the dairy, right? Those are mm -hmm. the ones that give us milk. Okay. And we might talk about them a little bit later. Yeah. Okay, so burger comes from beef cattle. Beef now, cattle. Hmm. Arizona raises, we have a lot of beef cattle, okay? But do you think that we have the most beef cattle than all, like, out of all the states in the United States? You know what? Before they guess this, I'm hearing some opportunity for a vocabulary lesson here. Ooh. Because you're using the word cattle a lot. So what does cattle mean? Okay, so cattle is the group of all of the animals that give us the milk, the beef, okay? So we use the, the bovine, the bovine animals. animals, okay? okay? So when we say the term cow, you guys use the term cow a lot, right? A cow is a female cattle that's had a baby, and that's where we get milk. Well, and she might not have, she doesn't even have to have a baby. We can still call her a cow, right? Yeah. It's the girl. It's the girl. And Cows are girls. the steer... And bull, those are both boys, okay? So the steer are the ones that can't have babies, right? And then the bulls are the ones that can still have babies, the dads, okay? That makes sense. Right? So then the other term I think that's a good one is called herd. Mm -hmm. So if we're talking about a group of cattle, it might be referred to as a herd, right? Over there in that herd, this okay. is how many we have, and which then is pretty cool. What's a baby called? A calf. a calf. Very okay. good. So you've probably heard a lot of those different terms before, but now you kind of know what they mean and then how they relate to the food that we eat. And then our beef cattle come in many different breeds. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's important uh, to know as well. Because sometimes when you go into a restaurant, you're going to see something and it's going to say, Black, Black Angus. Angus. What does that mean? It just means it's from the breed Angus, which could be black or red. Right. 
Yeah. It's not really telling you anything about the meat of the animal, just the breed that it came from. Now, different breeds are known for having um, different qualities within their meat as far as taste is concerned. But um, for a long time, that black Angus was very, very popular. So you might see that a lot. Mm -hmm. And here in Arizona, we have a very diverse a group of beef cattle on our ranches. So you'll find them in all colors, which is pretty neat. Okay. So back to Miss Alicia's question. What state raises the most beef cattle in this country? Now, it kind of makes sense yeah. when you think about it, right? Because we already use the term cowboy and cowgirl, and those are the individuals who take care of these animals. So when you think cowboys and cowgirls, what state do you automatically think of? They have a football team named the Cowboys. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. It's Texas. Ooh, right there. You guys should all know where Texas is, right? That's that big state right there. We love okay. Texas. So go ahead and pick a different color than you used for wheat, color in Texas, and write the commodity beef on the key of your map. Okay, so we've got a bun and we've got beef. What else do we need to make the best burger? In fact, this thing might make it not just a burger anymore, but we might call it something else. A something burger. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you guys like these too. It's one of my favorites. Miss Alicia can't have it, but I love it. Cheeseburger. Oh, look at this big look piece that. of cheese. Oh, mm -hmm. yum. I'm eating sick. Okay, <laughs> you'll get sick. I'll eat it. Okay, so we have cheese. Now, very important, where does cheese come from? Didn't we just kind of talk about that? Kind of. Kind of. Yes, yeah, so I'm hearing a lot of cows. Cows. Now, does the cheese come from the cows? What do we get from the actual cows? Milk. milk right? right? So those are our dairy cows that we get the milk from. And then we use that milk to make the cheese for our burgers and, and other things. Now, here in Arizona, we have lots of dairy cows. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I find very unique about Arizona and really only one other state, which is California, and our dairy cows is because of our climate, yes, that Arizona five C's, we are able to keep our dairy cows outside. And that's because it doesn't freeze and snow here. So because of that, we are able to have a lot of cows because we don't have to worry about keeping them inside a barn when the temperatures get too cold. So because of that, our dairy farms here in Arizona average about 2,000 cows per dairy. And we even have some dairies that have 10,000 cows. Yeah. But again, that's because our farmers can give them great care outside instead of inside. Now, you're probably wondering, I know I always did. What about the summertime? It gets really hot. It could get 100 and 15, 16, 17 degrees. Mm -hmm. So what do they do for the cows? Hmm. Well, for the cows in the summertime, they have an area where they have shade available to them. And also they have misters and fans that help cool down the cows. And the cows all like to be together under that shade area because cows like to be with their friends. They like to be together in a group, even or if they have... Herd. In a herd, right? Even if they have a big, big space, you'll see at the dairy, they have a big area. But they all like to be together because they're prey animals. So they want to feel protected in a big herd or group. So they're all going to be in that shade area with the misters and the fan. And it can be sometimes cooler than some people's houses in the summer. That's how cool it is under that, that shaded right. area. Right. If it's 115 outside and the dairy has the shades and the misters and the fans... It could be 79 to yeah. 82 degrees under the shade. Yeah. So that is a really big difference, 115 to 79 or in the 80s. Big, big difference. Just like when you're outside at recess playing around, you get really hot, you seek the shade. So our farmers provide lots of shade for their animals. But I think that's pretty cool. Yeah, and the breeds the uh, breeds of, of cows that we have here in Arizona are a little bit more heat resistant than some of the other ones. So that's why we have the breeds that we have here. 
And really here in Arizona, we only have two breeds of dairy cows. And the first one is the one you're probably most familiar with. It's those black and white cows. You know what we're talking about. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Those are called Holsteins. Holsteins. Can you guys say Holstein? Holstein? Holstein. Very good. And I like those ladies. One, I just think they're super cool looking. And I also find it fascinating that no two cows will have the same spots. And that's because their spots act as their fingerprints. So just like you don't have anybody else who shares the same exact fingerprint, it's the same with our cows and their spots. Now, I know you're a big fan of the other type of dairy cow we have here. What is that? I like the Jersey cows, the brown cows. So we don't have as many of those here, but I I like them quite a bit. And there's something really special about those brown cows milk. Chocolate milk. Not chocolate milk, right? We don't get chocolate milk from brown cows. We get regular milk from all cows, and then we have to add chocolate or other flavorings to get that flavor. And, I mean, I guess that made sense. Because if brown cows gave us chocolate milk, then we'd have to have pink cows for strawberry strawberry milk. milk. And we know that doesn't exist, right? And it would just go on and on. But the Jersey cows have a higher uh, butter fat in their their milk, so it makes it more creamy. So we make things out of it like... Butter and cheese. And ice ice cream. Okay. So we know now there's a lot of cows here in Arizona, right? We have over 200,000 dairy cows in our state. Mm -hmm. But do we produce the most amount of milk or cheese? No, we don't. So let's think a little bit what state we think the most cheese comes from. Mm. I mean, I'm kind of thinking of those cheese heads. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Some of you might know. Yeah. That was a good clue if you follow football, right? Who do we call the cheese heads? Where's the most cheese come from? Starts with a W. Whoa, 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 whoa. Wisconsin. Yeah, so that's that state right there. Yeah, next that to Michigan, which looks yeah. like a little hand, a little glove. Like a mitten, yeah. So Wisconsin. Wisconsin. So go ahead and pick a new color, not one that you used for wheat or beef, color in Wisconsin, and then go ahead and add to your key for your map the word cheese in that same color. Okay. So we've got a bun, we have a burger, and we have cheese. How many of you guys would stop right here and that's what you guys would eat? A mm, couple of them. A couple. They like couple just like a plain, plain cheese. I, I respect that. But we're that. making the best, the world's best cheese burger. burger. So, what should we put on here? Hmm. Okay, so I heard somebody say this. They said ketchup. How many of you guys like ketchup? We all like ketchup, mm-hmm. right? But when we're talking about ketchup, we have to talk about where ketchup not where it comes from from a state but what commodity does ketchup come from because you don't like grow ketchup how do we make ketchup what is it made out of that's right we have to have tomatoes okay that's super duper important so what we're going to talk about here for a moment is the commodity of tomato Um, maybe i should just go ahead and add a tomato onto Mm -hmm. oh my gosh look Look how big that big old tomato is all right so we have our tomatoes Now, the interesting thing about tomatoes is we can grow them inside and outside, Mm -hmm. can't we? Yeah. What's it called when we grow them inside? Uh, So we have them in a greenhouse. Okay. Greenhouse tomatoes. And another term we can use when they're grown inside is hydroponic. Hydroponic, yep. Right? Usually in the greenhouse, they're grown um, in an enclosed system so we can control the Mm -hmm. weather. Yep. And the nutrients that they're getting, making sure they get what they need. And we can also control your favorite thing, which Mm -hmm. is... The pests, the bugs, and the things that can get in there and eat the tomatoes or the plants and and kill it. So we can control those those things in the greenhouse. And lots of people grow tomatoes outside at their house Mm -hmm. also. Um, That's probably one of the easiest things to grow in a garden is a tomato. Now, just like we talked about different breeds of our cattle, right? When we were talking about dairy cattle and beef cattle, it's important to recognize that there's different types of tomatoes also. And we call those varieties. Can you guys say variety? Variety. Variety. 
And so oftentimes we'll be talking to people and they say, oh, those tomatoes that I grow in my garden, they taste so much better than the ones that I get from the store or I get from wherever I get them from, right? And a lot of that has to do with the variety of tomato that you grow in your garden versus the variety that are sold in the stores. Because the ones that are sold in the stores, they have to take into consideration some other things like how long is it going to take once it's harvested to get to the store to where the consumer, you guys purchase the tomato, to how long it stays fresh at your house until you actually use it. Mm -hmm. So that's something that you don't have to worry as much about when it's at your home garden because you can pick it and just eat it right away. And we also need varieties at the store that are hardy for shipping. You don't want to pick these tomatoes, stack them all together, and then by the time you get to the store, it well, was, it's it all ketchup. ketchup. It'd be smushed. Right? So we add in the ketchup to it since we're talking about it. So that's where some of the differences in taste in the tomatoes come from, is the different varieties. Okay? So recognize there's different varieties of tomatoes, and we can also grow them in different ways. And here in Arizona, we actually do have some greenhouses mm -hmm. that grow tomatoes. Have you guys ever heard of Eurofresh before? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We've got lots and lots of greenhouses growing tomatoes. Yep. So we can grow greenhouses or we can grow tomatoes all uh, most of the year in different places, right? Because of that, it allows us to grow it when mm -hmm. you couldn't grow them outside. And it's actually not Eurofresh anymore. That changed mm -hmm. to Nature Sweet. Sweet. That one so might. If you those, see the brand. Little, little they're in those eat. little bowls with the yellow mm -hmm. lids. I'm sure some of you guys eat them. Cherry tomatoes, and they're so, so good. So, Nature Sweet tomatoes. They are grown here in Arizona. Mm -hmm. So, we do know that we grow them here in Arizona, but do we grow the most tomatoes out of anybody else? I wish we did, but we don't. Who does? Let's see. Do you guys know so what our friends state to the this west? Is? California. California. Now, now uh, I was going to say, why is only half a California color? Because this is the area of California that grows those tomatoes. So we're going to chop and it in half. And we're going to need the other half yeah. of California for something else a little bit later. So only color half because we need part of that state for something else. So I else. take it and go straight down, make a line right there, and then color the top half. And you'll notice that we chose red for tomatoes, but you really can use any color that you want, okay? So color in half of California, and then write, well, I would write tomato at the bottom. Yeah. I think that's, that's a good one, because it's the commodity of tomato that we're buying, right? Or ketchup, if you want, just confused. <laughs> or both of them. Yeah. All right, so ready? Color half of California, only half. All right, nice job. We got California and tomatoes. So let's stick to some of those condiments like ketchup. What else could we put on here? People do ketchup and... My mustard. You're my friends. How many of you I guys like, like mustard. mustard? I like mustard on my burger. I don't like ketchup. Mustard. Yeah. This is my burger, so we're going to put a lot of mustard on it. I yum, like yum, mustard. Yum. Okay. Okay, so we know from talking to you already that mustard doesn't come from the store. It comes from a farm. So. But this one's a little tricky. How, where does it how, come from? How does mustard grow? Where does it? What does it grow on? Okay, raise your hand. Um, the question is going to be, does mustard come from an animal or a plant? Okay, so raise your hand if you think mustard comes from a, an animal. Okay, hands down. Raise your hand if you think mustard comes from a plant. You guys are right. Yep. Mustard does come from a plant. Do you want to tell them a little bit yeah, about it? Yeah, so uh, mustard comes from a seed, a mustard seed, okay, that are very, very small. They're they're known for being the smallest seed. They're super, super small, okay? And then they take it and they grind it up, right, to make mustard. That but piece. your parents might put some of that browner mustard on their burgers or hot dogs. That's fancy mustard. And that has, you can see the seeds, some of the seeds in there too. So that's what it kind of looks like. So it's usually not this bright yellow, This right? is my Heinz. Yeah. 
like this is the kind of ketchup mustard and a mustard. That's that's, what, that's my processed mustard right there. It's yeah, not fancy but it mustard. comes from a seed that grows on a tree, and they're super super small. So could people gl- grow mustard plant here? Mm. Yeah, yeah. You can really grow anything here because of our climate, but I don't know anyone that grows mustard. Definitely, here, but you probably could. Don't grow the most. Yeah, we don't grow the most. So. If we wanted to take a guess, let's give them some clues. This, this will be tricky. really fun, okay? So we want you guys to look at your blank map, okay? Miss Alicia is going to hold up the blank map for you to see, okay? You'll have your Let's own as well. Book. Okay. Now, this state is, well, it's in the northern part of the United okay. States. So it's in the top half, okay? Now. What other clues could we give them? Hmm. It's one of the larger states. In the north. And it would kind of be considered the northwest. Yeah. I think they they would consider it the northwest. So in this What's region. What's the biggest land area state-wise there? I think I heard it. This one? Would you guys stay? Got it. Ah. I love it. Okay. Montana. So, Montana. That's really easy, actually. Montana. Mustard. Yep. Montana, Montana mustard. mustard. You have to know where Montana is. Yeah, this big one right here. I like that. Okay. So pick a new color. Go ahead and color in Montana. So one, and you have part of here, and then right here, the big one. Yep. And then go ahead and write mustard in your key for your map. All right, so now we have our wheat bun, our beef patty, our cheese slice, our tomato and our ketchup, and our mustard. What else should we add Mm. to the burger? I don't know if a lot of kids put this on. Well, my kids do. My kids love these. This is my favorite. I always get extra of these on my burgers. They're little green circles, aren't they? Mm -hmm. Yep. Little green circles. Pickles. 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 I love pickles. Love, love, love pickles. pickles. So we have pickles. Okay, so is there a pickle plant? A pickle plant? A pickle plant? Do I go outside and pick a pickle? No, you gotta pick a what? What do you guys what does pickle come from? Cucumbers. Cucumbers. Very good. You guys are super smart. Okay, so if you didn't know already, there is no pickle plant. There's a cucumber plant. And then those cucumbers are harvested and pickled Pickled. to make our pickles. Right. And just like we talked about tomatoes, there's different varieties of tomatoes. There's different varieties of cucumbers. And pickling cucumbers are usually smaller, like you see in the jars at the store, you know, pickles. We like to call these pickled chips. Yeah. That's usually what you get for burgers. But you can also get spears, the half spears, or you can get whole pickles too. Yeah, the big giant ones. But it's yeah, so they're different mother, varieties but. are better for that. So a lot of times these are these are pickle ones and uh, pickling cucumbers. Butter crunch. Yeah, butter oh. crunch. And then you have the other cucumbers that you like slice up for salad or you guys might just eat. Okay. So actually, we we grow a lot of pickles in Arizona, right? Yeah. But are we the number one? Well, we grow a lot of cucumbers. A lot. Of, I'm sorry, a lot of cucumbers. We grow a lot of cucumbers in Arizona. Okay, and we can grow them in the greenhouse, just like the tomatoes. A lot of or outside, food. or outside. We have yeah, farms so that grow them outside both ways. Um, but there is a state that has the most pickle or cucumbers for just eating, and a state for the most for pickles. Mm. Okay, so I'm going to tell you for the cucumbers that we just eat for salad, Florida actually grows the most cucumbers for just eating, like for yeah. dicing and for things like cucumbers. that. Yeah, for okay. cucumbers. Cucumbers, Florida. But which are the ones, what is the state that pickles them? So not Arizona I think they're gonna need and some not clues. Florida. I think they're going to need some clues. And I think this one is actually a state, and it's kind of in the north. Mm-hmm. And it's near, or a neighboring yeah. state, to the state that has the most cheese. Yep. Do you guys know And there's a lot of is? bodies of water there. The Great Lakes. Oh, yeah. Where are the Great Lakes around? You got it. Michigan. Michigan. So Michigan, super important. Yeah, so both parts right here. The mitten and the top part. 
All right, so Michigan pickles. Mm -hmm. Michigan pickles. So pick a new color, color in Michigan, and go ahead and add it to the bottom for your key. These are some good looking pickles. All right. It's extra pickles. Um, can you guys hold up all of your maps and show us what they're looking like so far? I wanna make sure you're on the right track. Everybody, hold them up. Oh, you're doing a really good job. You guys are all doing a really good job, actually. I like the different color choices. Very nice. good. Nice. Okay, so we still have some, some ways to go. Now, Ooh. I'm gonna go ahead and add a commodity that I wanna talk about but it's not really because I love it. In fact, I'm allergic to these, so I can't eat them. So this is gonna ruin the burger for me, but I do know a lot of people like them. I know Miss Alicia likes them. Mm -hmm. And that is onions. Mm, okay? I like them grilled. Some people like, you know, sometimes on your hamburger, you'll find the round onions, and sometimes you'll find like the, the shredded, um, kind of sliced and diced onions on your burger. So we've got some onions here with us today. That is a colorful Ooh. burger. So onions. Do onions come from a plant or an animal? Of course they plant. do. Yeah, they come from a plant. Okay. Um, do we grow onions here in Arizona? Mm -hmm. We do. Yeah. We do. But do we grow the most onions? No, we do not. We do not. And this state, I think we can help them through this one. Okay, so let's give some clues. This is the most northwestern state in the United States. Do you guys know what that state is called? So all the way at the top left of your map, do you know what that is? I heard it. Yep. You hear it? Yep. Yep. Nice job. Yep. Washington. So, and that's Washington State yes, is Washington what we call state. that. Washington State. They grow the most onions. Do we have any other facts about onions? I think there's some cool ones to share. Yeah, so we, in Arizona, a lot of the That's onions that we uh, grow, a lot of them are going to be tra um, transplants, transplants, right? So they start them, and then they're taken somewhere else to finish growing. Okay. So what part of the plant are we eating when we're eating that onion? You guys keep coloring while we're talking, okay? What part of the plant are they eating when they're eating the onion? Well, it's called a... The bulb of the onion so okay. it's really a modified stem of of the most of the people plant. would call it a root but yeah. it's not really a no. root if you look at the bottom of the onion you see the little you roots see the right roots on there. so that is a big that's a storage for the plant that stores a whole bunch of energy and that's why we like to eat it because it tastes good and the cool part is you don't have to pick onions by hand i mean think about if you were a farmer and you had acres and acres of onions. An acre is about the size of a football field, mm -hmm. keep that in mind. So you had hundreds of thousands of onions. They have created some really cool implements that go with the tractors to help them pick the onions. So think of like a shovel blade or a disc and it goes underneath and turns up the dirt mm -hmm. where the onions are so that they can be collected. It's yeah, because cool. if you just tried and pulled them out, you might snap it off. So it's really important that it's dug up the right way. And it's important to recognize there are many different types and colors of onions, right? So you can have red onions, white mm -hmm. onions, you have yellow sweet onions, onions. Sweet onions. Yeah, and they're used for different types of green cooking. Green onions, that's the top part, yeah. right? Also known as chives. So hopefully we've done enough talking and you have yeah. your Washington colored in, okay? okay. All right, now, oh my gosh, I'm so excited. It's so heavy, she can't it is hold it. Heavy. This is a long time, <laughs> long time holding. Big burger. Okay, the last thing that we're going to put on Ooh. our burger, because I know there's lots of other things that we're going to ask you about when we're done with this one, but we're going to go ahead and tell you what we're going to put on our burger, and we're going to learn about why it's one of our favorites, and yeah. that is lettuce. So we're going to put lettuce Ooh. on our burger, okay? Now, I'm just so excited about this fact. I think I just have to let it out of the bag. And that is, oh my gosh, you guys. Arizona is the winter lettuce capital of the world. So yeah. I gave it away. We do grow the most lettuce. In, but not in the winter all time. the time. So in the winter, we grow more lettuce yeah. than anywhere else. 
us and the whole world. And why is that? It's because of another one of the five C's. Remember we said climate, climate right? It's moderate temperatures here in the winter mm-hmm. time. So February, well, November through February, here in Arizona, our farmers produce 90% of the leafy greens and lettuce yeah. is one of those. So we kind of already gave it away for your map. If you've picked your color, so. you're gonna go ahead and color in Let's just color half of Arizona. Go ahead and pick up the map. Can you show where Arizona is? You're not sure. Okay. So Arizona. You should know it's because that's our state, state right there. 48. It's the coolest one, in my opinion. I agree. Yeah. So we're gonna have you just color in half of Arizona, and that's because we are only the top producer for part of the year, which was the winter. winter. Very good. So go ahead and pick a new color color in half of Arizona and write lettuce. And then you guys are gonna need to hold on to that same color because the other half of the year, somebody else produces more lettuce than we do. Where do you think? What was the state we only colored? They already from? guessed it, you guys are so smart. Oh. It's gonna be California. So you already have half of California colored in for the tomatoes. But now you're going to color in that bottom half of California because Arizona and California share the title of the number one producer of lettuce, depending on which time of year it is. Miss Alicia is going to hold up the map of all of the commodities that we learned so you about can today. Check and so you can see. just kind of double check. And look at how pretty this Ooh. is. Look at how pretty that purple. Yeah. And then let's check out that map. Okay, so here is our map. And okay. we'll put it up at the end again. Yep. And so, so that we had check. wheat for our bun right here. No. Kansas. 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 I almost said Nebraska. <laughs> How horrible. Kansas. And Kansas. then we had beef, right, for our burger. Texas. Texas. Okay, we had our cheese. That was Wisconsin. And then we had, let's see, we had, what's next on our burger? Oh, tomatoes and ketchup right here, the red. That's California, that half of California. Mustard. Mustard, where did mustard come from? Montana, Montana. mustard, Montana, right? And then we had uh, onions, Washington State, that purple right there. Oh, my favorite one, pickles, Michigan. Michigan right here, and then lettuce. So half of Arizona and half of California. Now, while you guys are finishing that in, let us know what are some of the other toppings that you like to put on your burger that maybe you didn't see on ours. Yeah, we kind of knew you I were going to say that one. And it's actually being built right now. A little bacon for mm-hmm. our burger. So that will be one that will come in the future. And where do we think the most bacon is produced? Of course, that comes from an animal. What animal? Pigs. pigs. Very good. Where are the most pigs raised? Iowa. 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 So that'll be added to our map pretty soon. If you guys think of any other really good toppings that we should have on this burger, let us know. And we'll add it, and then we'll teach you a little bit more about it. So, but for now, I think we're going to go ahead and top off Ooh. our burger. And my friends, you in fact did make the world's best burger.